Ever since the original Pikmin sprouted up out of nowhere on the GameCube, this oddball puzzle strategy series has always held a special place in my heart. But when I played Pikmin 4, well, my heart grew two sizes that day. The earliest hours started out slower than I would have liked, but when it got going, it reminded me of an onion in the best kind of way. Every layer I peeled back added more and more depth, eventually growing into the best version of the idea at the heart of it. Not all of it provides the same challenge as I was used to, but with twice as many enemy types and nearly four times the amount of hidden treasures I loved gathering in past games, along with its wonderful musical score, improved graphics, and fantastic post-game content, I just couldn't put it down until I'd finished everything it had to offer. Pikmin 4 continues the series tradition of us playing as an alien the size of an ant exploring an Earth-like planet. That is probably actually Earth. Charmingly, most of the treasures you collect along the way are named by their appearance, so Space Spinners and the Stone of Advancement are really just Fidget Spinners and a Game Boy Advance SP. It's a fantastical world to begin with, but everything from the soil on the ground to the foliage everywhere on the maps is vibrant and each location feels distinct. A simple garden filled with literally larger than life insects and flowers that tower over you, where objects like this broken potted plant become an impassable barrier until you find a way to remove it, and puddles in the dirt become small lakes requiring blue or the new ice Pikmin to gather the treasure hidden on the other side. Much of the fun and strategy of Pikmin games comes from collecting and commanding different types of obedient little plant creatures to do your bidding, and generally avoiding sending them to their doom. For those jumping into Pikmin for the first time, it can seem like there's a lot going on, especially with nine types of cutesy creatures to master, having to split your attention between multiple objectives, and learning to manage your resources. But it's not as complex as a full-fledged real-time strategy game like StarCraft, and to its great credit, Pikmin 4 does a gentle job of rolling out new Pikmin items and abilities at a pace that won't overwhelm with too many options too soon. One of the most immediately noticeable differences between Pikmin 4 and its predecessors is that here, there's no time limit to the number of days you have to finish the story like in the original, nor is there any threat of running out of supplies like in Pikmin 3. It's a relief, honestly, and a recognition that a lot of us play games to escape from the tension of impending deadlines that haunt us in school or work. Even without the time pressure, though, mistakes will happen. You might think there's no problem too big when you have a numerical advantage. Uh, oops. Well, okay, fire types are super effective against ice types, so this is a done deal. Okay, now everyone, walk into the spider web and... Oh, okay, moving on. But don't worry, no Pikmin were permanently harmed in the making of that montage because Pikmin 4 gives us a handy feature that can bail you out from these mistakes. Until you finish the current day, you can choose to rewind time to fix your mistakes and improve your efficiency. As a perfectionist at heart, I found myself taking advantage of this system constantly. Among the many things to keep track of in Pikmin 4 is a wonderful new companion, this weird little pup, Ochi. He can carry you and your entire army of Pikmin on his back across obstacles like water, sniff out hidden items, and help you jump to reach shortcuts and items like never before. Of all the upgrades, Ochi's charge attack became my favorite of his abilities. Higher levels give him the ability to stun enemies for longer periods, while at the same time sending my entire horde of Pikmin onto a target to dispatch them quickly. This proved to be one of the best strategies for combat, and with the exception of bosses, it usually took down most enemies in one move, if I had enough or the right types of Pikmin along for the ride. That's the real trick to Pikmin Force combat. With 110 unique enemies, you've always got to be ready to adjust the composition of your army to counter them. For instance, if you try to battle a fiery Bulblax with anything other than red Pikmin, they'll ignite and run off screaming to their doom. But hey, that's what the rewind feature is for. Most boss battles are saved for the lower floors of the various cave sublevels, 
And while there are plenty of returning faces here, we also encounter a handful of new ones like the Sovereign Bulblax and the Foolix, the latter of which is a clever evolution on the Gulix from the very first Pikmin. Considering all the new types of enemies with elemental properties and the fact that Pikmin 4 only lets you bring out three types of Pikmin at a time, I felt encouraged to plan out my strategy for the day accordingly. As for the two new Pikmin types, the first you'll encounter are Ice Pikmin, and just look what they can do! They quickly became one of my favorites thanks to their freezing effect, which works in tandem with Ochi's stun and allows you to chain status effects on enemies big and small, making them a solid choice in most situations. Flow Pikmin are the other new additions, but they are really only available during night missions. There you'll trade in your real-time strategy-style gameplay for a simplistic tower defense format, or your challenge to protect various anthill-like structures until morning using only Glow Pikmin. I didn't really care for these early on, but around the midway point of the campaign, they added some new terrifying creatures and secondary points to defend, finally introducing the complexity and enemy variety I craved. As someone who seeks out challenge, I wasn't a huge fan of some of the new single-use items. They're just overpowered and remove the need to be strategic. After testing them all out, I felt like I had to artificially limit my use of them in most situations to keep things from getting too easy, since Pikmin 4 doesn't offer any difficulty settings. The story took me around 20 hours to complete, but in classic Pikmin tradition, that is less the real ending than a signal of more to come. While I can't go into detail, I will say that the post-credits content in Pikmin 4 might just be the best the Pikmin series has ever delivered. In fact, Pikmin 4's greatest folly is that it saves the best of its new tricks until you've completed the campaign's first ending and seen the credits. I would have liked to have dived right into all these creative locations, met their bizarre inhabitants, and unlocked its homage to previous Pikmin games. One of my minor gripes, though, is how co-op works in Pikmin 4. Unlike Pikmin 2 or 3, where a second player could take control of another character, Pikmin 4 instead has your co-op partner play as a reticle floating around the screen and that can throw pebbles to move objects or hit enemies as your character does his usual thing. It's more of an assist mode, and that's a letdown after playing the last few in real co-op. Outside of the traditional campaign gameplay, Pikmin 4 offers a pair of modes designed to test your aptitude at the concept of Dandori, a Japanese word for the practice of organizing tasks strategically and working effectively to execute plans. In the Dandori challenges, you must gather all the treasures within a time limit with a limited number of Pikmin, and the final couple of courses buck Pikmin's trend of being kid-friendly and are sure to test the best Pikmin players out there if they want to earn the coveted Platinum Medal. And then there's the Dan Dory Battle Mode, a chaotic mix of combat and gathering, and it's an enjoyable way to challenge my multitasking skill against an opponent who wants to win just as much as I do. You can play against the AI or a friend in local multiplayer, which is nice, but it's a shame there's no online capability. Like the three wonderfully weird mainline games before it, Pikmin 4 has once again captured my heart with its charming creatures that fearlessly follow commands regardless of their own well-being. The difficulty leaned a bit too much towards the easier side, but all new features like ability upgrades, a pair of new Pikmin, and our loyal sidekick Ochi add some variety to the traditional gameplay by offering options other than the grab-and-throw Pikmin formula of the past. Coupled with the largest number of enemies to battle, treasures to collect, and awesome post-game content that incorporates some great callbacks to the earlier games, I'm left with not just a positive outlook on Pikmin 4, but the direction the series is heading as a whole. For more on the Nintendo Switch, check out our reviews for The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom and Everybody 1-2 Switch. And for everything else, stick with IGN.